Hey, Stephen, as a uh, college football junkie, we want to see uh, the best teams play the best games in the best of venues against the best opponents. Uh, we're not going to see that uh, necessarily this year with Alabama, of course, inside what I still consider to be the best division in college football. We could possibly see that if LSU and Texas A&M are better prepared for the challenge this year, which I think both programs are certainly headed in the right direction. Certainly Jimbo's got Texas A&M uh, causing all sorts of waves, but they might be a year or two away. But uh, they'll certainly be a handful at Kyle Field. But um, the absence of the... USC, Wisconsin, Michigan, Florida State type game, what Alabama's had in the past in place of Louisville last year, Duke this year, that certainly should be a 45 to 10 type of game. You would think uh, the other three non-conference games aren't going to be challenges. And then if we look at the SEC Eastern Division slate, South Carolina, capable team with a brutal schedule. My goodness, the, what they've got to go through this year is ridiculous. Uh, Tennessee, on the rise, have recruited well under Jeremy Pruitt, but again, not quite ready uh, for Alabama, you would think, and, and not seeing Georgia, not seeing Florida, uh, the schedule not quite as difficult as, uh, again, outsiders would want it to be to see this team challenged. Uh, your thoughts about uh, the 2019 slate? The schedule to me, Mark, it sets up really well for the Crimson Tide. You bring up Duke, I mean, and David Cutcliffe, give him give him credit. He has tried to make Duke football as relevant as he can. It's not Cameron Indoor Arena. It's not Duke basketball. It's not Zion Williamson. It's not the NCAA tournament. But Coach Cutcliffe has tried as hard as he has to make this program as relevant as possible. But, you know, in this matchup, it's more about Alabama and less about Duke. How can Alabama come out and start this game? How will it come out? Will it be physical? Will it be efficient? Will it execute both offensively and defensively? How will the tie start and finish this game with the game plan that it has? So that's the biggest thing in terms of the Duke matchup. And when you bring up the Southeastern Conference slate, I think South Carolina could potentially be a trap game just due to after you face Duke and after you face New Mexico State at home, you pick up your grip, you go to Columbia, South Carolina, williams Bryce Stadium, which is about a six-hour drive from Tuscaloosa, the second longest road trip on the slate for Alabama's schedule. The longest, of course, you go all the way to College Station, Texas, Kyle Field, and take on the Aggies. And the last time Alabama was in Columbia, South Carolina, it did not go well. Now, of course, in 2010, there were completely different circumstances then. Steve Sarke I mean, not Steve Spurrier was the head coach. Of course, Steven Garcia was the quarterback. You had a Megatron freak at Watt receiver and Alshon Jeffrey. And you had Marcus Lattimore pre-injury Marcus Lattimore. So it was a completely different time back then. But it was still a hostile environment. That crowd was crazy over there at williams Bryce Stadium. And Alabama kind of in a state of complacency coming off a national championship in 2009. It enters 2010. And it gets spanked by Steven Garcia in South Carolina, 35 to 21. Now, this time around, you have a quarterback in Jake Bentley, a senior, 6'4, 220 pounds, who is a native of Opelika, Alabama. Now, this is near the Auburn area of town, but still, he's an Alabama native. And there was and there is nothing that Jake Bentley would want more than to knock out, upset the legendary team of his home state. At the same time, although South Carolina loses, lost Debo Samuel to the NFL, it still has Shai Smith and Brian Edwards, two very capable guys, Rico Dowdle in the backfield, no slouch at running back. It does have some pieces on defense, on defense, which includes Javon Kinlaw and the son of NFL legend receiver Joe Horn, J.C. Horn, in that defensive backfield. So, there are some pieces that South Carolina does have. I list this as more of a trap game, but still think Alabama takes this game due to Alabama more talent, Alabama a little bit better coaching, and Alabama a more so hungrier team just due to you don't see Nick Saban and Alabama get physically and mentally undressed the way it happened against the Clemson Tigers back in January. So then you look at the Tennessee Volunteers, you bring up Jeremy Pruitt, uh, he has really recruited well. 
But I still think, like you said, the volunteers are a year away just based on can the offensive line get right? That's the one weakness I see for Tennessee, whether it's guys being hurt, whether it's guys not ready. Jarrett Gorantano has taken a beating the last two years, despite the fact that he does have 21 games worth of experience. Now, the big plus for Gorantano is you have an offensive coordinator and a proven one in Jim Chaney coming over from Georgia. Jim Chaney has helped two big quarterbacks in Jacob Eason and, of course, Jake Fromm put up very, very big-time prolific numbers. Now Jim Chaney is with the Volunteers. He's going to help Gorantano. Tennessee's got some weapons at wide receiver with Marquez Conaway, Jawan Jennings, and Josh Palmer, or Jordan Palmer, excuse me. I think it's Josh Palmer, Jordan Palmer. His last name is Palmer. But at the same time, with Tennessee, still a year away. So I look at the schedule for Alabama. It's very doable. You've got some challenges. There's some challenges. The biggest three, Texas A&M, LSU, and, of course, Auburn on the road at uh, Jordan-Hare. In Auburn. All right there, folks. There's the rundown on Alabama football for 2019 between uh, our latest post with Steve breaking down fall camp, your season preview, your schedule preview. You should be ready to go. And if you want to take an even deeper dive, you head over to touchdownalabama.com. You get a full breakdown of position previews and everything you could ever want uh, as Alabama heads toward that Duke opener coming up in about 10 days. And, of course, subscribe right here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, for the best discussion, debate, and analysis of Power 5 college football every day. Stephen, we appreciate you taking 45 or 50 minutes to really uh, tear up the tide and give us uh, the truth for 2019, and we will uh, talk to you very soon. Appreciate it, Mark, as always. This is fun. I enjoy this.